Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of CNC Base Camp. A couple of years ago, I made a set of accessories for this really pretty brass capped birch ruler for the shop. It's a handy layout tool, it looks great, I love using it. The accessories that I ended up making for it are a drafting head, a protractor head, and a pair of trammel points. They've proven to be a real hit in the shop. They're good looking, they work well, and that's what we're up to on this episode of Base Camp. So stick around. Now there's a little bit going on inside this drafting head to make it work and lock securely. Inside, the ruler bears on two points, bottom and top, to make sure it doesn't rock. This knurled brass knob pushes against a U-shaped piece of brass, which protects the edge of the ruler. It clamps firmly, but it doesn't do any damage, and it's easy to adjust. We've got a decorative accent of hardwood here, which really looks sharp against the maple. And the whole thing is made in two pieces. So there's a thick back piece and a thin face. Another great feature is that there's plenty of room here for you to customize this drafting head with your name, your workshop's name. Now, originally I made these for Woodsmith, so it's got the Woodsmith name. Today we're gonna to put CNC Base Camp on it, but it's a good time for you to kind of think about what would you call your shop if you could quit your day job and just be a tool maker. So have some fun with this. Well, if you build furniture, you know you're gonna be striking some large arcs, and these trammel points are super handy. They slip on easily, tighten firmly. Just like the drafting head, there's a piece of brass in here, and that bears firmly against the edge of the ruler, protects it all at once. Very easy to adjust. You've got your option of either a pencil or a steel point, so you can go either way. They're very easy to remove. The view window lets you quickly adjust and set the distance between the two trammel points. Like the drafting head, these are made in two parts. There's a thicker back and a thinner face that are glued together, trapping the brass inside. And after the unit is glued up, we'll end up drilling holes and putting in inserts for our threaded knobs that secure the trammel point in place and secure the pencil. As with the drafting head, there's room on the back to personalize it. Another great accessory for your ruler is this protractor head. If you do any layout work, there always comes a time when you need to set an angle. You've got a nice scale here. It goes from 10 degrees to 10 degrees. So a lot of room there for a lot of different angles. Easy to adjust. One nice thing is the way the ruler is held in place, you can adjust this so that the ruler begins right on the edge that is going to be up against your work. So the readings on the ruler will read true, and that's kind of a handy feature to have. It's easy to set up. The ruler just slips into this pocket, tighten the knob, you're good to go. It's that simple. Once again, customize it if you like. The protractor head is a great third accessory to this grouping. So here we have the drafting head opened up. I've got the top visibility turned off. So what I want to show you is here are the two points, top and bottom, that the ruler is going to bear against. And that just makes sure that it stays tight and doesn't rock at all. If we look over here, you can see the U-shaped piece of brass, which clamps the ruler tightly in place. Behind the U-shaped piece of brass is a pocket for a threaded insert and in this hole, there'll be the quarter 20 knob, which goes through that insert and bears against the brass U. So those two things allow the drafting head to clamp securely on your ruler without damaging it. Here's one of the trammel points with the front removed for clarity. You can see the pocket here that the ruler is going to go through. And here's our U-shaped piece of brass, which is going to clamp firmly against the ruler. Above it is a threaded insert into which a small knob will go. Well, we're going to start milling the back of the drafting head right now. 
So I've got a quarter inch bit in the machine. It's a straight bit because I want a nice clean cut and that's the bit that's going to give me the best cut. So we're going to see a couple things here. First off, we need to make a pocket for the ruler to sit in. There's going to be a pocket for a threaded insert. There's a hole which is where you place your fingers through to adjust the knob and finally a perimeter cut. So let's go ahead and fire up our CNC and get started. Well now it's time to go ahead and cut the top of our drafting head. So this piece of wood is a quarter of an inch, whereas the back was half of an inch. Now what you're going to see happen is the machine's going to cut a slight pocket here, and that gives a little extra room for the threaded insert that we need to glue in place during assembly. It's going to cut the hole that you reach through for the threaded knob, and it'll cut the outline. And once again, I'm going to use tabs to make sure the part stays attached to the parent stock. Well next up, I'm going to go ahead and do some V-carving on the top of my drafting head. You can wait and do this until when everything is already assembled or do it now. It's up to you. I've got a 60 degree V-carving bit in place and I'm going to V-carve to a depth of 0.03 inches with it and that should give me some pretty crisp lettering for CNC Basecamp Fine Tools. But of course you are going to put your name or your shop's name there. Creating the wooden parts of the trammel is very much like the drafting head. We have a back and we have a front. The only real difference is you need two trammels. So we're going to see two parts being cut out here. There will be a pocket cut which will create the seat for the ruler to lay in and also the, the area for which we have the little brass U and the inserts and so forth. Then it's going to cut the profile. When we do the thin top plate, you're going to see the machine cut a viewport, a hole for holding a pencil or steel point, and then the profile. The first step in creating the protractor attachment for our ruler is going to be to make this base plate. And the first step in that is going to be to cut all these lines for all the degree markings. Now because these are fairly tight and close together, I'm using a 30 degree V carving bit. And that's really going to get in there in these tight little areas and make very clean, nice lines. Once we complete that, I'll swap this bit out for the straight quarter inch bit that we've been using and we'll go ahead and cut the outer profile. Well the last wood part for our protractor is going to be this little cover plate. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to V-carve the CNC Base Camp logo on here. Then I'll flip my part over and I'm going to go ahead and cut a slot for this 828 piece of threaded rod and finally the profile. So let's get busy and get it done. Well, with all the CNC work done, it's time for us to make a couple of parts and do some glue ups. So let's start with the drafting head. So what do we need to do here? Well, one thing I want to show you first out of the gate is that I've added a decorative trim strip to the bottom edge of our back and our top. In this case, I've used Paduk, but any contrasting wood would look great. Walnut, Wingate, whatever you've got on hand. I kind of like the red tone of the Paduk, so it was a winner for me. 
We do need to add the metal shoe that's going to press against our ruler when it's in place. And we also need to add a threaded insert. So let's talk about this brass shoe first. The stock material is some 1 8 by 1 quarter inch Alloy 360 brass. Very easy to work with. I went ahead and cut a piece 1 and 5 8 inches long. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few little pencil marks here where I need to go, which is 9 16 off of each end. Okay. I'll place it into the vise. And I always find whenever I do any bending, it sure is a good idea to check to make sure that I've got the part square to the vise. I do. And now I'm just going to take a wood block, hammer, and bend it back to about 45 degrees. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to bring it up to the second mark. Check for square. And I've got it leaning a little bit. There we go. And drive it back. So at this point, it's just a matter of putting it in our spot and kind of seeing, well, how does it fit? In this case, I can see that I need to open up my legs just a little bit. It's pretty easy to do by just placing it in the vise. And forcing it open. And there we go. That's pretty good. So what we're looking for is the shoe to be able to move into this area quite a bit to make sure that it clamps against the head, but it also has to fully retract so that when you're putting the, uh, the ruler through here, it gets out of the way. And that's all there is to it. Now the next part we need to be concerned about is we need a threaded insert. And we have a pocket formed on this side and also a little extra room on the top. Now, it really isn't that important what type of threaded insert you use. This is a quarter 20. The one I've got here is actually a thermoset uh, threaded insert meant for plastic. I chose that because it's got knurling on the outside and it's a fairly compact threaded insert so it fits nicely. If you have on hand, let's say, your usual brass threaded insert like so. That'll work. You'll just need to file a top, a bottom, and two sides and fit it into that opening. Pretty much anything will work. So I think we are ready to glue up. To glue up this package, I'm going to begin by putting my wood glue on the wood areas. Then I'll go ahead and use some CA adhesive for my threaded insert. This is actually a black colored CA. It's got rubber in it and it's good for binding differing materials. But honestly, as snug as my threaded insert fits in there, about any glue would work just fine. I'm now going to set my brass shoe in there, and now we're ready to put the top on. I'm going to reference the bottom off my bench top. And just use some spring clamps, so they're quick and handy. And there we go. Set that aside and let it dry. Now we're ready to move on to the assembly of our trammel points. Now in this case, we are going to need to put the brass shoe in place before we glue the package up, but the threaded inserts are going to come later. So I can go straight to the glue. I've previously made my little brass shoes, and I did it in the exact same way that you saw for the drafting head, only they're a little bit smaller. And I'll grab a few more of the spring clamps and clamp it in place. Well, there we go. We've got the drafting head and we've got the trammels all glued up. So let's take a look at where we are with the protractor head. Now, as you can see, with this base, I went ahead and added that Paduk strip here for a little pizzazz. 
And I did that over at the table saw. Very quick, very easy, but it really makes a difference in the appearance. I also made our plastic indicator piece. Now this is some 3 8 inch extruded plastic. And the two bits that I used to create this are a 1 8 inch bit, which I used to create the holes, and I used a drilling tool path. So the drilling tool path pecks at the hole as only as deep as you have the depth of cut set, and that way it's going to clear those chips out each time it retracts. After drilling these holes, I then went ahead and put some screws down through them into my spoil board. And by doing that, I secured my part in place and could avoid using tabs. Tabs are very hard to clean up on plastic. And I really would rather have that nice, clean cut line without having the tab sprue or sanding marks. For the other portions of this operation, I used this bit, which is a single flute quarter inch bit. And so this bit then cut our pocket for the shank of the knob. It cut this shelf that our ruler will rest into and the pocket. And then of course it cut the outside profile. So it was a fairly easy operation. The only cleanup I ended up doing was this area in here. I had a little bit, a bit of a white cloud in the center from where the plastic got a little bit warm. So I went ahead and took a sharp chisel and I just scraped this area a couple of times to clear that off. Well, it's time to wrap up our wood ruler accessories. So let's start with the drafting head. We, of course, glued the two pieces together. We have a threaded insert and our brass uh, shoe in place. And so now I need to just take my quarter 20 knob and insert that in. I took some time earlier to sand all the edges of the drafting head, and I also used an eighth inch roundover bit on the top edges. I left the bottom sharp, but the top edges have all been rounded, and the little eye here for the knob. So let's give it a try. Yep, that does what we need it to do. The protractor head what I've done is I went ahead and screwed on the indicator plate with this cover. Previously, I put a threaded insert into this hole. And we'll take a knob and a good heavy washer. I chose one that has been blackened so that it will match the knob. And then to hold the ruler in place, we need to make a little shoe to pinch it. This is just a piece of eighth inch brass, and I filed it to shape, nothing fancy, and then tapped a hole here for an 832 rod, and that's what we have here. The 832 rod fits through the slot that our CNC machine cut previously on the cover plate, and I have an 832 thumb nut to hold that in place. Let's make sure everything works. And there we go, a protractor head for the wood rule. Here we have our two trammel heads. What I did was I sanded the outside, and I also used the router. This little battery-powered router is phenomenal for this kind of work. And I went ahead and rounded over all the edges, and I also rounded over the edges in our viewport here. I then drilled a hole a little bit larger than a 5 16 into the trammel, but not all the way through into the cavity here. And that's for the pencil or the steel point. A crossbore was completed for our threaded insert, and it is an 824. And that'll hold the pencil or steel point in place. I also opened up this hole on the top of our trammel 
and inserted a quarter 20 thread and insert. And that will receive a quarter 20 by 1 inch thumb screw. And there we go, nice and tight and firm. The steel point is easy to make. What I did was purchased a length of 5 16 steel rod. Doesn't have to be any particular type of steel. Any will do. And I simply held it against a belt sander while rotating it. And you could also use a grinder. But I find the belt sander is pretty handy with that broad flat area for creating a taper like this. If you would rather not use a piece of steel rod that's 5 16 you can also use a dowel pin of the same diameter, but instead insert a pin in the very end of it using eighth inch steel rod. And that's a lot easier to work. And you can use a grinder, you can use a file, there's all sorts of ways to create a nice sharp point. Cut a length of it about, say, inch and a half, and put that in the end of a 5 16 dowel. So two different options there. Well, there we go. We've got three great accessories for a wooden ruler. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. Hope you'll join me next month for another episode of CNC Base Camp. Well, over the last year, I've had a couple people write in wondering about the electronics in our shop made CNC machine. In a commercial machine, everything's packaged up into a little silver box. So you're really not sure what's in there. But when you make one, you have to learn a little bit. But it's not hard, so let me walk you through all the different parts that make this CNC machine go. Let's go ahead and start with the power source. This is an 8.8 .8 amp transformer. It puts out 36 volts. That's what's going to make our motors go. From there, we have three motors and three drivers. The drivers help control the action of the motors. Each driver has a series of different choices that we have to make on it. These choices are controlled by what are called dip switches, dual inline package switches, what they're called. And this is a, what they call a keyboard variety because it kind of looks like piano keys. They're just simple on-off switches, nothing more. When you look at the driver, you'll see two sets of information here. On this one, the top set is setting the number of micro steps. Now, what's a micro step? Well, each motor is divided into 200 individual steps. So it's not rotating like a conventional fan motor. It's cogging its way through 200 individual cogs. Those individual steps can then be broken down electronically. The 200 steps are set up electromechanically within the motor. The micro steps are set up electronically within the driver. There are a number of choices on this one. One, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty-second, and one sixty-fourth. And that is how many times we're going to divide each of those two hundred steps within a full rotation. The lower chart has to do with the amperage that our motor is going to draw. So we set up the switches to accommodate the micro stepping, and we set up the switches to accommodate the amperage draw. So hypothetically, if I wanted to set up a one-half step, and that's going to divide those 200 steps into 400 then, I would set the switches at on, off, off. And it's just a matter of flipping the switches up or down into the on or off position. Nothing more than that. In order to set the amperage, Let's say I were to choose 2.4 amps, I can see that my switches number 5, 6, and 7 are set at off, on, off. So it's actually pretty simple to make the right choice and to set up your driver for the motor configuration that you want. So moving on to the individual motor. The motors are of course different sizes and they're sold by in ounces for the torque that they'll put out. I have three motors here that I bought as a package from Build Your CNC. This was a package meant for a homemade machine with a fairly heavy gantry. 
Well, this machine does have a kind of a heavy gantry because I want it to be very solid and very rigid. So this large motor powers my gantry back and forth along what I've selected to be the x-axis. The two smaller motors are powering the z-axis and also the y-axis. These smaller motors have eight wires. The larger one has four, but they're essentially the same. We're using what's called a bipolar setup, and thank goodness there are instructions with the motors, wiring diagrams, and the Builder CNC site that I use has a lot of great information. And that really helped me out to know what how to color code everything and how to wire it. Now for all these motors, the wires ended up being paired. So there were essentially four connections made to the motor. These motors have two coils in them. So typically you're going to find the nomenclature to be A plus, A minus, and B plus, B minus for your connections. A plus and A minus go to one coil, B plus and B minus go to the other coil. So it's really not that hard. The cables which are going to connect the motors to the drivers for this machine are what are called high duty cycle cables. Now for a lot of commercial machines you're going to see a wire management rack holding the cables in place. Those have to suffer a high duty cycle as well, but for my machine to keep things simple I'd simply have the cables looped very loosely on the exterior of the machine. But the cables are meant to be able to go through cycles millions of times, so they're just the right cable for what we're doing here. One thing that is important is that you choose a cable that's shielded. Electromagnetic interference can always be a problem with a CNC machine. Electromagnetic interference can happen from dust collectors, any kind of motor, any kind of electronic devices you have functioning around them. And so shielding is important. In order to control the motors, we need to have what's sometimes called a breakout board or a controller, and that's what this is. The controller or breakout board has microelectronics in it which tie everything together and help interpret the G-code being sent to it. All of these connecting points will connect to those cables, which connect to our drivers, which connect to the motors. The breakout board is specific to a software that you're going to use to operate your machine. This breakout board is specific to a program called Mach 3, which I have up on the screen right now. Mach 3 is what I will download all of my files into. It's how I will operate the machine when I need to change a bit, stop it, or do any of those sorts of commands. There are other operating systems other than Mach 3. There's Planet CNC and there's a host of others. That's a choice you have to make when you build your own machine. They're all pretty good. I've used both Mach 3 and Planet CNC, and they're fantastic, each of them. And so that's really the basics of how our homemade CNC machine operates. It's got the same components you have in any commercial machine, it's just that they're all not neat and tidy in a little silver box. But learning about the electronics, learning how to wire them, is part of the fun, and it's part of what makes this such an exciting opportunity when you build your own CNC machine.